ninth work session of the Baltimore County Planning Board. It is now called to order. I'm Nancy Hafford, the chair of the board, and we'll now start our meeting with the roll call to account for all the board members that are present. When you hear your name, please say aye. Mr. Array. Aye. Ms. Brophy. Aye. Ms. German. Aye. Mr. Hafer. Aye. Mr. Heckman. Aye. Mr. Heinel. Aye. Mr. Hinton. Excuse, he's waiting for the baby. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a good, good reason. I don't think that is. He could call in. <laughs> he's at the hospital. All right, Mr. Halipka. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson. Mr. McGinnis. Aye. Mr. Perlow. Aye. Ms. Pinero. Aye. Mr. Warren. Aye. Ms. Wolfson. Aye. Great to see you all tonight. I would like to welcome all the board members and the members that are of the public that are present with us to joining us this evening for the first comprehensive zoning map process for 2024 work session. This evening, our objective is to review and vote on all the issues in district one and two in an orderly manner. We will first vote on all the items that are not sequestered for further discussion for tonight. If an issue were not raised as sequestered, we assume the board would like to accept the staff's recommendation. As such, we will take a vote to accept the staff's recommendations on all those issues that are not sequestered. After we take sequestered issues one at a time in chronological order, I will ask the board member who requested an item to be sequestered to share their questions or their perspectives on why they did not agree with the staff's recommendation. The staff then can give their rationale on the county's position, and then the board members will have an opportunity to make a motion as they see fit, and then we will have a vote. We will begin with all District 1 issues, and then we will move on to District 2. Board members, our sequestered issue for District 1 includes the following issues. 1-001-003-008-009-013-015-016-017-018 Zero one nine zero twenty two zero twenty five and zero twenty six. Before I begin, do we have any additional issues we need to add to the sequestered list for District One? Not hearing any at this time. I will entertain a motion to accept the staff's recommendation for all non sequestered in the district 1. Be it moved that the planning board accepts the recommendations of the planning board staff for the log of issues in district 1. With the exception of the sequestered issues just listed by chairwoman Happer. Second, May I have a second. Second. Okay, thank you. Now that we have a second, I'll do a roll call of the name. Mr. Array, Array? Yes. Ms. Brophy? Yes. Ms. German? Yes. Mr. Hafer? Yes. Mr. Heckman? Yes. Mr. Heinel? Yes. 
Mr. Hinton's not here. Mr. Halipka. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson. He's not here either. Thank you. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Perlow. Yes. Ms. Pinero. Mr. Pinero. Is yes, off. Ms. Pinero. Okay, Mr. Warren. Yes. Ms. Wolfson. Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. We will now go one by one through the sequestered issues, beginning with issue 1 001, sequestered by Mr. Perlow. Mr. Perlow, do you want to um, discuss your issue? Thank you. I think I'm okay now. I just wanted to cover myself that I could have discussions on it. So I think that we can vote on it based on the staff approval now. Okay. Um, is, is anybody against that? Now, I would Should make I the motion to accept the staff recommendations for 1001. Okay. Second. Right. Thank you. Um, planning staff, I presume I still need to do a roll call. Planning staff. <laughs> Amy. Yes, do a roll call, please. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ray. Yes. Ms. Brophy. Yes. Ms. German. Yes. Mr. Hafer. Yes. Mr. Heckman. Yes. Mr. Heinel. Yes. Mr. Halipka. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Perlow. I'll recluse myself from the vote. Okay. Ms. Panero? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. Ms. Wolfson? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Next is issue 1003. And that was raised by Ms. Brophy. Hi, okay, thanks, um, Chairwoman Hafford. So I guess mine was more just um, questions for the planning staff as well as just to clarify. So at the public hearing, um, the petitioner spoke and said that it was basically a house that's operated as five residential units right now and has been that way for over 70 years. I mean, I'm not 100% sure the 70 years is fully accurate, but it does say that they wanna intend to keep the property the same way. And I noticed um, planning comments had that the zoning change was consistent with master plan 2030, but it doesn't align with Baltimore County goals regarding land use, growth, management, et cetera. Um, so I'm trying to understand, is it, that they're operating as like a non-conforming use right now, or, or um, you know, I don't, I don't know why we would not allow somebody to do something if they've been doing something for seventy years and it conforms with master plan. I, th I think that's my question. Yeah, I also pulled this issue, and I, I agree one hundred percent. We had we had four people out that were all in favor, uh, and they were the tenants. Um, that didn't want to have to be moved out of their property. So um, I will let staff answer, but I would move, make a motion to accept the requested DR-16 for the two point or point two nine acres. Uh, good evening board, this is uh, Joseph Wiley. I am handling first and second district for CZMP. Uh, 
the reason that we said it was consistent because the use itself is residential it's existing so the use itself is not really going to change uh but we said we went against that this would just be a spot zone in the area of uh there's a dr55 Okay, but how are they operating the way they are now, Joseph? I, and I'm not sure, Joseph, if you can answer that. My, my, my concern is, you know, similar to what Todd and I said, if they've been operating this way for so long, is it just they're under like a special exception, like a non-conforming use or, or what's the situation? Uh, the notes here say that it, it was a non-conforming use. So can, can they continue to operate it that way, or wouldn't it be better for them to change it to the correct zoning so that they're no longer non-conforming? Also, it was my understanding that they were getting pressure from the county because they were non-conforming. Um, you know, I don't, I'm, I don't work for the zoning department, um, but typically you can continue to operate as long as you don't expand or or those kinds of things. But as Joe said, we looked at it, you know, from a zoning and land use point of view and a spot zone, um, you know, was probably our biggest concern. Mr. Halipka, you also raised this issue. Is there any concerns you have? I, I think it's the same same uh, issues that Todd and Emily have, have brought forward that if it's if it's been operating this way for years, um, it seems like it's been a non conforming use and. I can't remember if they said that part of the issue is as a non-conforming, if they wanted to try and borrow against it or, or whatnot, that there, that would raise a red flag. So, um, I, I didn't hear, you know, I, I don't recall hearing much opposition in terms of the way it's currently functioning. I think some people had some issues about parking, but that's always the case. I mean, it seems to have been operating without major issues for a number of decades so hi this is Ngone from the planning department we also have received um comments from pai saying that changing the zoning to dr16 is not enough to permit the five non-confirming units they will also need to be approved to a special hearing yeah thank you and gone for bringing that up because i saw that as well so the square footage that PAI had the comment about looks like it's less than 0.29 acres just by, you know, 43,000 square feet, one acre, et cetera, et cetera. So by my math, I was thinking the same thing. So 0.3 acres really only gives them four units, not five. So, so you're saying that even if we grant them the DR-16, they're still going to have to go through a special public hearing, right? According to PAI comments, yes. Okay. Okay, Ms. Brophy, um, you're the one, one of the ones that raised this issue. How would you like to proceed? So, uh, I mean, I would, I would like to make a motion that we um, recommend the, the DR-16 that was requested. That way, um, you know, at least there's the additional density for the three or four units um, per PAI's comment. And then the petitioner at that time could go through the other motions that, you know, Ms. Ngong had mentioned about a special hearing with the public. I second that. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. Yes. Ms. German. Yes. Mr. Hafer. Yes. Mr. Heckman. Yes. Mr. Heinel. Yes. Mr. Alipka. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Perlow. Yes. Ms. Panero. Yes. Mr. Warren. Yes. And Ms. Wolfson. No. Okay. Thank you. Motion carries. Next. 1-007 brought up by Mr. Warren and Mr. Perlow. Thank you, 
Howard, I'll let you go first. Well, based on where this is located, um, you see the building that's there now. Um, you've got a lot of major redevelopment that's going to take place here along security rolling um, 695 and all. Um, their requests to me to have an AS. I don't know enough about the tenants in the building, but I believe that the um, location is a proper location for AS. You've heard me for many, many years that I believe on the major Carters, um, the AS should be granted. And that's the way I feel right here as well. Um, there's been, you know, no staff agreement there, but, um, you know, I believe that where it is, um, is not going to affect, um, you know, anybody at that point. There's, a need for stations. We'll need stations for even, you know, electric cars to be able to charge up. And if that's what it becomes in the future, I'm okay with that. Mr. So Warren, think, anything you want yeah, to add? Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is part of a, a much larger issue that we, we put in and, uh, have worked closely with, with, uh, with the county council member, uh, Pat Young, on this, and we we're going to propose another zoning for this whole site uh, later on, and on number twenty-two, and that would be to make this CT part of the town center, which is what we're doing at security. So, um, I would make the motion to uh, at this point to just accept staff recommendations or or put the CT on at this point, it's, it's going to be redundant because I'm going to do it as part of, of, uh, of 22. Would, would either one of you like to make a motion on this? I Are think there any other questions, Nancy, um, yes. I think because this is, even though it's part of another issue, it has its own, you know, request and recommendation. I think we do need to get a motion on the zone for this one. We can't just say for 20, you know, wait for 22. I think we need to, to get a motion for what this one should be. Great, Amy. Um, so gentlemen, do, wanna, do you wanna make a motion on 1007? Yeah, the, the county council or the county councilman's not gonna allow a gas station or, or a car wash on this site. So, um, I wouldn't it, it, in the interim of the CT, I would make the motion that we accept staff recommendations. Second. Okay. Um, Nancy, real quick, if I could, this is not part of 22. So. I thought, I thought this was included in 22. Should have been. No, it's, it's its own separate issue. Somebody had raised this piece um, earlier than when the councilman came in to raise his area. So. As you can see, it's the yellow highlighted area and 22 is kind of next to it. Starting yeah. over here. Well, then, I, then I need to change my, I'm going to recommend that we make this. Uh, CT. Been a motion a 2nd, Madam chair. We well, right now we have a motion and a 2nd from where your original Todd. So. I want to modify my emotion. Okay, Todd wants to withdraw his first motion and then Todd make a motion. I would like to modify my motion to uh, to have this be CT. All right. So are you um, saying BMCT because CT yeah, is a district? Yeah, okay. yeah. We need to be clear on that. All right, apologize. And, and Nancy, may I? May I ask a question whether or not the property is located in a town center? Because city can only be applied within a town center designation. Yeah, that was going to be my, my next my question of, you know, to the staff. How do they feel about it? Well, I, I'm going to the adjacent property. I'm going to request that also to go in the CT. Which is adjacent to the mall, which is the CT zoning. 
Half of the property is included in the security town center. Um, just this piece from this blue line over this, this piece is not in the security town center. So, Mr. Ward, you understand part of the property is not in the town center. Right. But since it's adjacent, can't we add it to that? Isn't that part of what we're doing? I think the staff should make that determination and let us know. Madam Chair, the motion was most was uh, moved and seconded, and it can be amended. But the seconder he, he the second. amended it. So um, if no, he, the second the second the person that uh, did a second would have to withdraw or ask. Okay, you did amend it. Okay. Yeah, and and thank you, Mr. McGinnis. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, now, Mr. Warren. Would you please make your motion? The motion I, would like, I would like this to be a the zoning to be BMCT. And so is that okay with the staff? I can't comment on that because I, I don't know what's required for designation of town center. If, if this is not within that boundary, um, you know, we can't fix that here. So does that mean that we can defer the item? Um, we've never deferred an item uh, during a work session. Um, so I also don't know. I think since he's made a motion, we need to see if we have a second. This is not a typical way you would handle a property like this. <laughs> so um, is any, does anyone want to make a second to Mr. Warren's motion? Second. Is there going to be discussion? I think before we vote on this, because the, uh, the staff is saying that it is not a part of the uh, town center. <laughs> so how can that be established before we can vote on? It? So can I can I make a suggestion, um, Todd, and let me know if you're okay with this? You'd have to amend it again since we're discussing. Um, so staff recommended that the entire parcel be zoned BM. Can we amend it so that? Uh, the entire parcel will be BM per staff recommendation, but the portion that is in the CT per um, Jen Meacham's screenshot there would be BM CT. And then that way we could vote on it as is and then figure out whether or not you can extend that CT to the other portion. That That's just my suggestion if you like that, Todd. Yeah, I, I'll support that. That's fine. I just my my concern is uh, I'm trying to stop there to be a gas station or a car wash on that. So BM does not give them that. No, it doesn't. And then if you get CT on a majority of it, I mean, Jen, do you mind covering the part of the parcel that is part of the CT again on that screenshot? Yeah, see how like a majority of it is, except for that tiny little piece of that parking lot. I mean, right. both buildings. Right. Are I'll let Pat, Pat can move that and do whatever he wants later. I, I'm fine with that motion. So if you want to make that motion, I'll second that. Is that okay, or... Madam Chair? You, have a, you have a motion. Yeah, we you have, have a motion. We have a motion already and we have a second. Right. So, but... so you have to we have to take a vote on the motion and the second that we have, and if it's voted down, then we'll take another motion and a second. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. The point of order, okay. Madam Chair. Your, the motion is the uh, vote should be on the amendment, not on the original. The original was not withdrawn by the seconder. You have a motion to amend, so you have to vote on the amendment first. All right. Oh, I withdraw my second. Does that make it easier? Okay, that's it. Okay. All right. Is Todd withdrawing his motion then? I will withdraw my motion and let uh, let 
uh, Emily make the trophy. Motion. Thank you. Um, so I make a motion to accept staff recommendation as BM on the entire parcel, but would like to amend the portion of the parcel that's within the town center district to BMCT. So it would be all BM, but then that portion that's allowed, and I apologize, I don't know the acreage to be BMCT. Second. <laughs> Second. Okay, Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. <clears throat> yes. Mr. German. Yes. Mr. Hafer. Yes. Mr. Heckman. Yes. Mr. Heinel. Yes. Mr. Halipka. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Perlow. Yes. Ms. Pinero. Yes. Mr. Warren. Yes. Ms. Wolfson. Wolfson says yes. Thank you. <laughs> Lordy. Okay. 1-008, Ms. Brophy and Mr. Perlow. Um, I, I withdraw this as my sequester. I don't have any more questions about this one. I'm not sure if you do, Howard. I do not. So I also would withdraw my sequester. Okay. I would make a recommendation to accept staff recommendations. All right. Well, and Second. All right, anyone opposed? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, 1 dash 009. This was raised by Ms. Brophy, Mr. Warren, and Mr. Perlow. If, if you don't mind, Emily, and uh, I'm going to take a swing at this because I've spent a, a bunch of time on the site. So this okay. is a site across the street uh, across 95 from 1-008. Uh, this is a sliver of, of 1.74 acres that the hope is that there could be either a sign put on there or some kind of uh, uh, facility for highway or um, uh, uh, for like BG and E, um, council supports this, and I'd like to, I'd like to make the motion to uh, provide them with the uh, BM on the 1.74 acres. Any discussion? So again, how does staff? Feel about that. So when we, I'm sorry, was somebody saying something? Right? Yes. No, this is nine, Steve. This is nine. nine. No, it's, it's like eight. I said. Yes. It's sorry. Outside it's outside the Urdle. This this doesn't have any street frontage other than 95. Um, you know, the, when the, the state was to put a facility here, they don't have to follow the zoning, so they don't need it. So, what are you saying? Our recommendation was to keep the existing zoning. So, there a discussion? Am I correct that this is a landlocked piece of property with no access, no right of way? It has no direct street frontage. I'm not sure about right of way, though. It it does say no direct access, just so you know, Kathy, on um on one of the reports on the right. CMP. So it does have it is landlocked, like Tom, um, like um, Todd said. So there's no access to it. I think, I mean. I mean, I I'll, I know you already had discussion, Nance, but I mean, I do second Todd's motion in respect to if they want to put something to the public benefit on this site. Um, I don't think the petitioner is intending to put um, 
you know, like a, a retail or something on there for business major use. I think it was just like he said for something of public service, like a tower or something like, you know, public service amenity. So I'm not sure if um, staff has a, a different zoning that that would work on that's not business major that could possibly help the petitioner. What is your are we at again? I'm sorry, Wayne, can you say that? What, you? what was said before that if it's either the state or BGE, they're not bound by the zoning in the same way. And BM opens up many other uses beyond what the petitioner may say is in their immediate future. Right, but what about something like a private a cell communications tower, tower or something like that. Yeah. Well, cell towers, I believe, are regulated to the Public Service Commission. But if they want to lease from a private um, space, you know, like in a shopping center or in something like this, they wouldn't be able to do that with the existing RC5 zoning. So is there like a is there like a compromise between the BM and the RC5 to allow them to just put something like that in like this landlocked piece? It also gives them the ability to put a highway sign up also. I'm not gonna fight this huge. I mean, so I think Pat's gonna give it to him. I'm just going through the motion, so. I think we had a first and a second. Can we have a vote and then? What was the motion again? The motion was to give them the the um, allow them the BM zoning. But and we had so we had a sorry. second to that. Yeah, Emily made a second. I seconded it. Yeah. Okay. Right. Staff recommendation is to leave it as it is. Well, I was just wondering if Director Lafferty had any other alternative zone before we took the vote. Uh, is there anything else? Director Lafferty, or is that uh, it? I, I don't know of another zone. I'm not sure if Gene or Joe may have any insight to that. I don't know. No, I don't. I don't know. I do know they put cell towers out in the rural zones in the north part of the county. So I'm sure they could put one here. We have them in the western part as well in the RC 5.5 and RC 2. Oh, so it can be put in RC, Kathy? It, it exists, yes. Yeah, you've seen it. Okay. Okay, we have a, for, a motion and a second. I'm going to do a roll call unless there's any further discussion. Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. No. Ms. German. No. Mr. Hafer. No. Mr. Heckman. No. Mr. Heinel. No. Mr. Halipka. No. Mr. Johnson. No. Mr. McGinnis. No. Mr. Perlo. Yes. Ms. Pinero. No. Was that a no? Mr. Yes. yes. Ms. Wolfson. No. Okay, motion does not pass. Madam Chair, can I amend my vote to no? Yes, yes, you can. No. May I have another motion? I move we accept staff recommendation. I second that. Okay. Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. Yes. Ms. German. Yes. Mr. Hafer. Yes. Mr. Heckman. Yes. Mr. Heinel. Yes. Mr. Halipka. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Perlo. Yes. Ms. Pinero. Yes. 
Mr. Warren. Yep. Miss Wolfson. Yes. Thank you. Okay, next up is um, issue 1 013, and that was brought up by Mr. Warren and Miss Panero. Uh, do you want to start? Yeah, this is a, uh, a site on Route 40 that uh, Pat would like to convert over from uh, OR1 and, and OR um, uh, to BMCCC, and I uh, would make that motion. <laughs> Give some background. Um, well, first of all, it's located in the Baltimore National Bank Commercial Revitalization District, so that's obviously right for for BM. Um, it the property they're proposing a full service, I believe, car wash with a cafe, um, and I don't remember if there was much community uh, input one way or the other with this, um, but. If this were to be approved, BM, well, I would be recommending BMCCC. Um, Todd, I'm not sure what you would would want. That was I, I, I recommended BMCCC. So okay, that was what was position uh, um, requested. Um, it would still have to be. Um, it would still have to go through the full approval process with the administrative law judge. Um, so the community would still have uh, a lot of input if this zoning were to be uh, approved. Mm -hmm. It is currently located if the property is located next to a car dealership, so it's not putting up car washes is certainly not uh, foreign to a car dealership. It, it fits the, the, the area there it, it's and it'll be a big improvement to it. So. Is there any other discussion? If not, can we hear from the staff? Sorry, I was getting my notes together here. Uh, I'm sorry, I apologize. No problem, Joseph. Uh, we did have one person sign up to speak, but they were absent, so they, they did not speak. Um, looking through everything. So, could some of them remind me, what is the OR zone again? Office residential, isn't it? Yeah, that's all right. Yes. Yeah. I think part of the concern had to do with the surrounding residential and whether or not you have compatible zoning as a transition to the residential communities that are behind it and adjacent to it. I think that was one of the main concerns. <clears throat> And doesn't that OR1 um, allow a density of 5.5? So, you know, you're looking at almost 10 housing units in that space. The, the it does look like we were concerned with the uh, creeping of the BCC back off of Route 40. Thank you, Mr. Wiley. All right, are there any other questions from anyone? If not hearing any, can we have a motion? Repeat the motion. I, I have made a motion. a motion to to grant BMCCC. Second. Okay. Now that we have a motion and a second, I'll do a roll call. Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Profi. <clears throat> yes. Ms. German? No. Mr. Hafer? No. Mr. Heckman? No. Mr. Heinel? Yes. Mr. Halipka? No. Mr. Johnson? No. 
Mr. McGinnis. No. Mr. Perlo. Yes. Ms. Panero. Yes. Mr. Warren. Yes. Ms. Wolfson. No. Motion does not carry. May, may we have a second motion? I believe from speaking with the petitioner that they would be happy with BLCC. So instead of business major, it'd be business local. Right. Um, we have a, another motion for BLCC on issue 10133. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Um, so how does the staff again, the staff, how do they feel about it? I think, um, Mr. Ray, the staff makes their, they made their recommendations and sent them out to us. Right. I understand that. So. So we have another motion in a second. So I think we need to take a vote on that. Can I ask a question? Does anybody know what's directly ahead of us on Baltimore National Pike? Adjacent? It's There's the, it's the mall. The Sam's Club. It's a Lowe's. Where, um, it, says, where it says BMGCC. CT. Um, yeah, where yeah. the arrow just was. That, that's yeah, that, that's like a hotel, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, I thought maybe it was a dealership or something that. Well, the de the dealership's adjacent to it. This is a car dealership parking lot is what this is. So where's the dealership? It's the old, uh, it's kind of, to, it's the single building to the left there of the one that's, it's the old Muscleman's Dodge. Okay, right where somebody just put an arrow. Yeah. Okay, do we have a motion and we have a second? Just so everybody knows, I believe it's currently being used as like a backup for storage for the car dealership. So putting something, you know, a cafe along with a car wash, you know, it's certainly not residential, but it certainly fits with Route 40 and yep. our dealership adjacent. Okay, after the discussion, does everybody clearly understand the motion? No. So, nope. Um, Ms. Panero, would you mind making the motion again? Yes, the motion is to um, request zoning for, or have the zoning be BLCCC. Okay, and then do we have a second? I seconded it. Okay, now, Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. Yes. Ms. German. Yes. Mr. Hafer. What is the current zone? So one and Most of it's OR1. Almost. Yeah. The entire thing. Yeah. 1.96 acres is OR1. Is 0 0.04. No. Okay. Um, Mr. Heckman. Yes. Mr. Heinel. Yes. Mr. Halipka. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. No. Mr. Perlo. Yes. Ms. Panero. Yes. Mr. Warren. Yes. Ms. Wolfson. Yes. Thank you. The motion carries. Next up is item 1-015, and that was brought up by Mr. Perlow. Wait till the map comes up. Okay, I believe that this is a gas station that's been operating 
um, for about, I don't know, almost 70 years here on the corner, um, but does not have AS. It's, I guess, what would be a non-conforming use, and they just want to bring it into what it really is being used now as a gas station and have their AS so they don't have any problems um, or questions in the future at that point. And I think that's a reasonable request that it's been there for 60, 70 years. Any discussion? Not hearing any. Um, which, I'll make uh, a motion. Mr. I'll make a motion that the zoning be BLAS one one dash oh one five. I have a second. Second. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Array? Yes. Ms. Brophy? Yes. Ms. German? Yes. Mr. Hafer? Yes. Mr. Heckman? No. Mr. Heinel? Yes. Mr. Halipka? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Perlo? Yes. Ms. Panero? Ms. Panero? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. And Ms. Wolfson? No. Motion I carries. I don't get the vote. I thought you, sorry, Mr. Perlow, I thought you did. Yes. <laughs> Boy, I think you're a tough crowd tonight, guys. <laughs> All right, we've got it. Thank you. Motion carries. Next up is 1-016, and that is Ms. Panaro and Mr. Warren. So for this one, I have had this question um, with, with before, before I knew this, we could read the staff recommendations. I just have questions of why the staff decided to not uh, offer this or to, to go through the zoning of the star. Um, the location of this property, um, in my opinion, if not here, where, um, considering what's already stored there. So I want to know why the staff, um, what the staff views on that. I'm sorry, you were cutting in and out a little bit there. Oh, um, just what, how you came to the conclusion. Um, yeah, <laughs> Sorry, you, you asked if why we kept she's wondering, as is. she's wondering why our recommendation is what it is, why we did not um, recommend to grant the request. So with this one, we had a, some community opposition. We had a group at the meeting came up. Um, only four people signed up to speak back to back, but only two of them actually did. Um, I'm, I'm still getting emails. I just received an email yesterday about this from the community in opposition against this. Um, apparently there was supposed to be an agreement that they're not supposed to be parking buses back up in here. Uh, but apparently some of the neighbors were complaining that the community, that this business is parking buses back up in there. So, you know, the people who have, when they have their windows open, they're getting diesel fumes into their homes and they're afraid if they get this changed, it's uh, they're just gonna be parking basically right up on the parking lot, the property lines. I think that's if they well, first of all, it's owned by Woodlawn Motor Coach. So are they or is any part of their property zoned other than DR55? Because yes. I would imagine Woodlawn Motor Coach is not density residential 5.5. No, it would like appear how? the property is BR. Okay. Um, so they want to change, they want to have the 1.72 uh, acres match what's already zoned. Yes, if you look at the map, you can see it looks, it appears wooded at this point, at least on this aerial. Okay. So I, I've talked to the, to the, to 
positioners uh, on this um, and along with the council. Um, my only amendment to this would be that we give them a 15 foot uh, forest buffer and a and a uh, a man fence, uh, a solid fence uh, between the forest buffer and the buses. Um, some of their property is zoned DR55. You can see the property line is the green. So there is a small portion of the back that is zoned DR55 and the rest of it zoned BL, the portion in the front. Okay. <clears throat> Any other and questions? Jen, is the, is the uh, request only for that second half in the back then, not for? Uh, yeah, it's for the piece in the back and then this other property, which is owned by Jason Wiener tr trustee. It's owned by a different owner. Is that part of this issue? That's yeah. part of this issue. Yes. Okay. I thought though you showed when you did the screenshot a moment ago that the first the top part adjacent to the other built out area like so that would be our the no? parcel these are the parcel lines so hbjc llc owns this property line okay. um and that's the property line half of their property is br the other half is dr55 in the very back back here this is dr55 which is in the issue this part's br which is not an issue and then this other secondary property that's owned by someone else is DR55, and they include it in, in their issue boundary. That piece is owned by someone else and also included in the issue boundary. Okay, any other questions or comments? And I guess I have a question. The part that's furthest to the back that's owned by the by the other entity. Any sense how deep that is? The whole thing's only one point seven acres, so it's um let's see. Feet. You're about half of it, so point seven five, point eight of an acre. Looks like about half of it. 150 yeah, feet. I'm just trying to get a sense. I mean, Todd was talking about doing a buffer, so I'm just thinking, is the buffer basically that other property? So the property on the back is 150 feet. Across or deep? Um, It's across. So like this, do you see how it's drawing the line? So that's 150. Yeah. And so the other parts, <coughs> well, less than half that. This piece is a hundred and like a hundred feet. What's the property to the north that looks like it has trucks plant parked on it or something? That's part of this property that's in the issue boundary, the northern property. So this is the northern property, and that's. HBJK LLC. Those, those are school buses. Those are the roofs of school buses. It's, it's Wood, Woodlawn Motor Coach off the uh, reside. That's their property. Okay, just wanted to know who was there. Parked. And you said the current zone of the front was what, Jen? That the front green B part that you're messing BR. with? BR. BR. Okay, so they're basically requesting the back portion match the front. Is, is what they're asking, except for that additional piece that's somebody else. I mean, I'm, I'm never really a fan of somebody petitioning to rezone someone else's. I don't know, Katie, if you're okay with just amending to allow them to only rezone what they own, that portion. I well, think. maybe they intend to purchase that portion if it gets rezoned. I believe that's the purpose. Yeah, I totally got it. Honest. I just had questions about I didn't know who owned what. I just had questions about this property from the first time it presented because got it. Just knowing where it is on Route 40, I'm like, well, where else are you? If not here, where? 
again, I, I, the only way I can support it is with a buffer, a 15 foot buffer and a, and a man fence. To, to block that, um. Well, we can't require a fence in the comprehensive zoning. You can, you can limit, you could create a buffer that remains DR 5 by. But we, it's the development process that's going to see if they get a fence or not. We can't covet it. That would be something that Pat would have to do. We, we don't, we don't do covenants. <laughs> uh, if, if, the, if the county, if the county council wants to make that a condition of its approval, that's up to the county council. Okay. That's fine then. Then I, I would, I would be willing to move forward with a 15 foot. I guess 5.5 buffer. 5.5 zoning for the 15 foot perimeter on the west, east, and south sides. Is that what you're saying, Todd? Yes. Does 15 feet do if somebody's worried about diesel exhaust? Does Does someone want to? Is there if there's not any other discussion on this? Does someone want to make a motion? I make a motion. If I, um, am I allowed to make a motion? Sure. I make a motion that a the the um, perimeter on the north, on the west, south, and east side of the issue, for a 15 foot depth, be zoned DR 5.5, and the remainder zoned. Um, what are they asking? Um, BR. 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 I'll second that. Okay. Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. Yes. Ms. German. Yes. Mr. Hafer. No, because diesel fumes know no boundaries. Mr. Heckman. Yes. Mr. Hint um Mr. Hinton, I'm sorry. Mr. Halipka? No. Mr. Heinel? Yes. Mr. Halipka? I'm not going to vote twice. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. Johnson? No. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Perlow? Yes. Ms. Panero? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. Ms. Wolfson? Yes. Thank you all. Okay, now on to 1 017, and this was brought up by Mr. Perlow. I will remove my sequester on it. Okay. I make, make a motion. the motion to make. To accept the staff recommendations of BMCCC. I'll, I'll second, second that. All right. Mr. Array? Yes. Ms. Brophy? I, I recuse my vote. Okay. Ms. German? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Hafer? Yes. Mr. Heckman? Yes. Mr. Heinel? Yes. Mr. Halipka? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Perlow? Yes. Ms. Panero? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. And Ms. Wolfson? Yes. Thank you. All right. On to 1 018. And this was brought up. By Mr. Warren and Ms. Panero. I'm going to wait until the map comes up because I think that shows it nicely. So, this property is owned, and the adjacent property is owned by Merritt Properties. Um, they want to have this property um, zoned mainly MLIM, keep a very, very small portion, 0, uh, 0 0.02 DR55. Um, this is going to be for a parking lot. No new structure, no new building. 
um, they just want it to be additional parking for that existing building. It's an industrial park that's there currently, so it's just additional parking for the existing industrial park. So, and they've owned these two adjacent par these parcels for a long time. So, it just I mean, it, it makes sense because it's it butts up to Silver uh, Sulphur Spring. Questions? What is the, do we know the yellow area to the right of those two or three houses in the middle? Just looks like it's included somehow in, in 1 past 018. Is it? That's what I want to just be sure of. Um, I think we had, to, so, we had to do a sliver to make it work, wasn't that? Yeah, so it would be these properties here are within the boundary and then um, there's a sliver that cuts across over to this side it's all owned by i think all the properties are owned by merit okay just wanted to um, understand mm -hmm. so you want to surround those three houses with this zoning of the parking lot is that the idea the parking's already there it's just it's just a, an addition to the existing parking. But kind of like Howard said, this piece to the right, the Jen's arrow is kind of on that whole piece is part of it, not just this sliver on the bottom, right? Um, it's these properties here. So this this sliver is part of um, properties that aren't owned by merit. They're individually gotcha. owned parcels, um, but then these properties over, over here are owned by merit and these properties over here are owned by merit. So, so you're actually cutting the residential properties with a sliver of MLIM? Um, yeah, well, those properties are already half zoned MLIM. So this is one of the properties you can see the, the back half is zoned MLIM and the front half is zoned DR 5.5. Is that true for the adjacent ones to the one to the right? Jen? Uh, yes, that's all three of those. They have okay. um, MLIM. Oh, okay. Do, do we know if those houses are owner occupied or if they're rentals? Um, the, I, I have that. Oh, Jen, do you have the addresses turned on? The two um, right hand ones are apparently homeowner occupied. I also re received emails from directly across the street at 216, 218, and 220 uh, against this issue. And just so everybody knows, this is the dead end portion of Sulphur Spring Road. This is not the, the major portion, the thoroughfare through Arbutus. Isn't there parking already existing all, all through there on the left-hand part of the property? It looks like the majority of the property to the left already is a parking lot. As a drive, it has a street through it, a driveway with and parking. Park. Yes, you can see it there. So, Tom, well, may I ask, are they looking to expand their business footprint so they need more parking? No, what they need they need additional parking for the for the the industrial park that's there currently. So this is just an expansion of the parking. It's not an expansion of the facility as I've been told. But why would they need more if they if they meet the parking requirements, it's not they, typical they, for business to redevelop add more parking if it's not necessary. They they are they're saying that they have inadequate parking. It's a it's not a requirement, it's a want. I believe that there's a plan to put buffers around those three houses. It's a need for more parking for the tenants, as I've been told when I put the issue in. So. I believe that building is also gone. The big building right next to the issue. To the left or to the right that you're talking about, which big building? Uh, th that whole building right underneath oh, the God. issue is gone. It's been demolished. I just saw it the other week. Got it. So they are going to rebuild something. 
but it, yeah, but that's, that's why they need more parking. It's the Baltimore Business Interchange. It's a flex industrial development plan that Merritt's already received county approval for. So they own the 1018 as well, which they're trying to turn into parking, not a building to provide for their project that's been there and will be there after it's approved by the county. Is that correct? I believe they own everything below the yellow, everything below 1018. That is all merit properties. I believe. I believe that's correct. Right. Any other further discussion? If not hearing any, can I? I have, a, I have a question if anybody. So if we were to grant this, the homeowners who own those houses, would it make their lots more valuable? It won't make them less valuable. I don't know that I agree. I think that they would be more valuable to merit. Right. Okay. So if there's right, right, that, that, my question to answer. Thanks. Right. Can we have a motion? And I believe there is a county approved plan on this already. So I, I would, I'm going to make the motion that we accept um the requested zoning <coughs> which is todd br i gotta pull it up hold on it's trying to five point five point oh two and mlim two point one one okay mr warren's made a motion and may we have a second Second. All right. Uh, Mr. Array? Yes. Ms. Brophy? No. Ms. German? No. Mr. Hafer? No. Mr. Heckman? I would be okay with the left side, but not the right side, so I'll say no. Mr. Heinel? Yes. Mr. Halipka. Mr. Halipka. Mr. Johnson. No. Mr. McGinnis. No. Mr. Perlow. Need to close myself. Ms. Panero. Mr. Warren? Yes. Ms. Wolfson? No. Okay, the motion does not pass. Okay, can I have a second motion unless there needs to be further discussion? Um, Except staff. Sorry, um, I was gonna make it a motion um, you know, similar to kind of what Mark was saying earlier, I would make a motion to accept that portion to the left as, um, and I don't know the exact acreage, so I apologize, as um, the requested MLIM, but not the portion to the right. Second. Emily, are you also saying not that little band that connects the two? Right, correct. I don't want to say right, but yes, correct. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. The band that connects the two um, is actually already border lot. That already borders along MLIM because all three of the font, the back of their properties is MLIM. So there right. isn't harm to that um, since the back is already. Yeah, but they don't need the connection anymore, Katie. Right. That's why. Like, if you're not, if we're not doing the right piece, they don't need that piece to connect anyway. It doesn't, but I'm just, like I said, playing devil's advocate, what's the harm? 
What's the benefit? All right. Right now we don't have a motion on the floor. So Ms. Brophy no. made a suggestion. Ms. No, Panero. I thought you were seconded by Nancy or by uh, Ms. Wolfson. So there is a motion. Ms. Wolfson. I, I thought that uh, Ms. Brophy made the motion to um, um, grant the, uh, recommend the upzoning of the, um, the portion on the left hand side of the screen. That's right. So I, I did make a motion and Ms. Wolfson did second that if, if that's okay. okay. So, so, so we have a motion and a second, Mr. Array. No. Ms. Brophy. Yes. Ms. German. No. Mr. Hafer. Yes. Mr. Heckman. Yes. Mr. Heinel. Yes. Mr. Halipka. I think we lost Mr. Halipka. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Perlow. I recluse myself from the vote. Ms. Panero. Yes. Mr. Warren. Yes. Ms. Wolfson. Yes. Thank you. Ma Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Halipka is back. Okay. Mr. Sorry, do, were you able to hear that motion? Only parts of it, so I abstain. Okay. All right. Thank you. And Madam Chair, before we continue, can I please remind the board members that if they expect to recuse themselves from any vote, that they should not be addressing the vote or speaking on the issue? Recusal means that they are not to participate, not simply not to vote. Thank you, Mr. Lafferty. Okay. Moving on to the next issue, 1-019. And that was brought up by Mr. Warren. Yeah, this, this parcel has already been rezoned uh, and is, uh, is in the part of a large uh, townhome community, 182 townhomes. Um, there's a portion of it right now, uh, that is ML, which would only allow for student housing. Um, we'd like that that portion be allowed not only for student housing, but for, um, to be leased to, to any, to any resident. Um, so the change that we're asking for is uh, BR for point or 0 0.12 and then the DR 5.5 5 for uh, for 12.39 acres. Again, this is a development that's already approved and in the process of being built. Actually, Madam Chair, that's not accurate. There are two separate developments. Southern Crossroads has been approved. This is uh, proposed the Forge Overlook, which is a separate development on the same. Uh, it is, as Mr. Warren said, it's uh, ML, which allows specifically uh, purpose-built student housing, but it also includes some faculty housing on the property as uh, the submission initially presented itself. Uh, staff in part, uh, determined that since it was already a development plan that had been discussed uh, and actually had gone to the DR development review panel twice without getting through it, uh, that there was a plan already underway that didn't warrant expanding to the DR 5.5. That was part of the, that was substantial part of the basis for the staff's uh, recommendation not to approve the change. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Lafferty. Uh, yeah, I was under the, under, uh, the drawings I see show that they're building houses on there and their student housing, not I didn't think, open to I didn't, everyone, so. I didn't think student housing was allowed under DR55. It's not. 
not the purpose oh, actually, of it is. specific to ML. But you couldn't you couldn't build you couldn't have residential housing in the ML. So it just gives more opportunity for more housing. Any other discussion? What's what's the project? What's the property that we're looking at? I don't know what direction that is in, but just I guess you left of it. Uh, this is Good Shepherd. Todd, okay. what is the property? The Good yes. Shepherd. Yes, this is the Good Shepherd. Yep. And that's part of the zone. Deal. They're demolishing the buildings that exist. Okay. But that property is currently zoned DR55 as well, correct? Yes. Okay. And that's what the Southern Crossroads project is, where it's going to be built. All right. So then this issue would match what's already currently zoned there and what's already currently being developed. There's the development plan that's already been approved all the way up through the ALJ and Board okay. of Appeals for that um, other part, the Southern Crossroads piece. Okay. I believe is more townhomes, I think is what they're. It's a total of 182 townhomes for that they're proposing for everything. So that's the pictures I've seen were townhomes. So. so what's that piece? That's the BR Todd that's proposed. Do you know? Is there, I, like... I think that was a buffer. Okay. That was a, I think a sliver correction over there <laughs> yeah. to kind of match the parcel line with the zone line. So this zone line would scoot over to match this parcel line. Um, so there, there would be a little bit of BR to follow the, the parcel line. I see. Thank you. I move except staff. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to accept the staff's recommendations. Mr. I, I already had made a motion, but that's that's fine. No, no, no motion was made. Um, Mr. Array. Yes. Miss Brophy. No. Miss German. Yes. Mr. Hafer? Yes. Mr. Heckman? No. Mr. Heinel? Mr. Heinel? Mr. Halipka? No. Mr. Johnson? No. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Perlow? Yes. Ms. Pinero? No. Mr. Warren? No. Ms. Wolfson? Yes. Um, it looks like I have seven against and six for um, staff. Is that correct? Counted six and six. I have six and six as well as Crystal. I do too. This is Taylor. Mr. Heinel fails. So much. Mr. Heinel, correct? Who's, who's missing? Correct. Mr. Heinel is currently absent and Mr. Hinton is currently absent. You got a vote, Nancy? Nope. Then going for no. We need a new motion. So I'll make the motion that we. Um, the requesters, which is me, motion of BR 4.12 and DR for 5.5. I'll second that. OK, 
Okay, Mr. Array? Yes. Ms. Brophy? Yes. Ms. German? Yes. Mr. Hafer? Yes. Mr. Heckman? Yes. Mr. Heinel? Still not there. Mr. Hinton? Not here. Mr. Halipka? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Perlow? Yes. Ms. Pinero? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. Ms. Wolfson? Yes. All right, thank you. All right, next on to issue 1 022. And that was brought up by Mr. Warren and Mr. Perlow. So, if Howard, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll kind of get started. What the plan originally was to do was to try to incentivize development along Security Boulevard, uh, mostly in an attempt to remove some blight that we have in the community. Um, as always, there's unintended consequences when you do that. Is there were certain things that I thought uh, by putting the CP on there would be an incentive. It's actually a, a disincentive um, in certain areas. Um, uh, so the motion that, or, or the two areas, there's an area inside the beltway or to the east of the beltway, if you'd like. Um, we would like to look at that um, as CCC for all of those um, all those areas, um, except for where there's current AS, um, we would leave those current sites as AS. Um, so, and then outside the Ertl, which is part of the parcel that we've already talked about, we would leave the um, the MLR. Uh, portion, uh, which is a state um, salt dome and state police um, facility, MLR. We'd also leave the two AS, uh, the AS sites uh, that are there currently um, AS, and we would make the rest of the site CT. So it's it's really a large swath of property um, with the intention of trying to drive development around the mall that the county has invested a number of our tax dollars into already um, and to really grow that area. And we really want, um, you know, there hopefully a red line comes in the future, but the hope is that we can build some uh, uh, more apartments, higher end apartments, uh, some maybe some residential along that corridor um, with some amenities. I worked a little with Steve on this today. I don't know, Steve, if I did a good job of outlining what we had talked about. Was that well, maybe, maybe I didn't pick up what you had, were just saying about on the inside inside the Beltway. Um, the, what we have is uh, retaining the BMIM, but also putting BMCCC. And then you would propose the CT outside, which by that map, I presume Jen shows that that's the town center extension. So that would fit with the CT over on that side of the outside of the beltway. Right. So you would be accepting what the staff proposed on inside the beltway, but adding the CT to the other portions that are now shown in blue. Is that right? Yeah. Except for the ADS, not the ADS. Yeah. Yes, that's that's correct. Okay. Um, also, issue 1-017 has already been voted on, so and that overlaps this issue, so we have to make sure that the zoning that was requested in that area is the same 
for this issue. I believe issue. That, that does, that's the BMCCC, so it, it is included. Right, Mr. Lafferty, I thought we talked about that. I believe that. so, I believe yeah. so. We can double check that, Jim. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> So maybe let it, me say it a little bit clearer. I'll do my best. We're going to accept the staff recommendations for inside the beltway, um, outside the beltway, except for the MLR and the existing AS that are out there. We're going to make it CT. Did I say that right, Mr. Lafferty? That said right. I think so. And it would be the the BM, BL, well, actually, the one BM piece at the top is not in the uh, CT district, is it? Either is the ML. Yeah, there's some areas that are shown outside the town center boundary. Well, we've already figured out that we can't move that, so we'll just exclude that from the, from the CT. Because that's what I was told, right? That we can't put that in the CT. Right. So, so okay. I would exclude that from the. So, so then Jen, is it only that one BM piece that's closest to the ramp? It could be CT. Um, if you're not replacing any of the AS. Or, there's a little piece of AS in that hole right there. Right. We want to um, leave the. They, I don't think the intent was to change the AS. Okay, so there's a little piece of AS right here and then a little piece of AS up here. So the only thing that would be changed over here would be this piece that's showing in green to um, BM CCC. CT. CT. Yep, that's the motion. Okay. Because we already that. moved that other piece, right? We've already moved that other piece that we were talking about in. To the 107? Yeah. No, the. Was that 107? I could have been 107. Yeah. Yeah. 107. Yeah. What about the BMPs to the north? Is that staying BM or BMCCC? BM. Yeah. Keeping existing zoning. I'll second the I'll second the motion and trust that you guys will work it out. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. I like the idea. <laughs> okay, we have a motion a second that we hope everybody clearly understands. <laughs> and Ms. so, Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. <clears throat> yes. Ms. German. Yes. Mr. Hafer. Yes. Mr. Heckman. Yes. Mr. Hinton. Oh, he's not. I'm sorry. Mr. Um, Hel uh, Hilton, is he here still? Heinel, is Mr. Heinel here? Or he's gone for good? No, he's, yeah, I think he's gone for good. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Halipka? Uh, yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Perlow? Yes. Ms. Panero? Yes. Ms. Wolfson? Yes. And Mr. Warren? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Okay. Now we're going to 1 025, and that was brought up by Mr. Warren and Mr. Perlow. So I, I'll jump in. This this was a property that uh, um, that Pat wanted to to bring. Uh, there's a there's a large parcel with a rental property on it. The gentleman across the street has a a, uh, a small construction company and wants to build a garage uh, on that parcel. Uh, Um, the, uh, the zoning that we're looking for on that is BL. There is a large buffer. There's a large stream behind this property, uh, with a bridge and that before you get to the retail or to the residential parcels to the back.
Hey, Todd, did the owner who, I mean, does the guy who want to build something there, did he get any letters of support from the residents behind this property? Uh, he, again, I, I just got this on Saturday, so I, I haven't spent a ton of time on this. Okay. Um, but from what I understand, there, there was no, no one that came out against it, obviously, because it was same to same. Uh, but from what I understand from Pat that he has asked uh, them to reach out to the community and their the community is supporting this. Um, but again, that, that's I got that on Saturday at a a quick call with Pat, so I, I don't All right. I don't have a ton of information. Okay. Any questions or? If not hearing any, Mr. Warren, do you want to make a motion? Yeah, I, I want to make the motion to make the parcel that is currently DR 5.5 BL for 0.23 acres. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? <laughs> I'll second that. Okay, Mr. Array. Yes. Mr. Array? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Brophy? Yes. Ms. German? Yes. Ms. Mr. Hafer? No. Mr. Heckman? Mm, no. Mr. Halipka? Yes. Mr. Johnson? No. Mr. McGinnis? No. Mr. Perlow? Um, yes. Ms. Panero? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. And Ms. Wolfson? No. One. Motion carries. Okay, the last one in District 1 dash 026, and that was brought up by Ms. Brophy and Mr. Warren. Ms. Brophy, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll jump in here. The community had, a, had allowed um, a zoning change during the last cycle uh, to support. I believe it was a motorcycle repair shop or some kind of motorcycle um, facility. The the people decided to not move forward. So the community association would like it to be brought back to the LCCC. So um, it's currently BLCC 0.01 and BR 0.038. And we're just requesting BLCCC for the full 0.39 acres. Madam Chair, if I may, BL, there's BLCCC all around the property. Uh, other zoning up and down East Drive as well. Um, and so the staff generally is hamstrung when it's the uh, same, same request. But uh, we do acknowledge that the surrounding zoning would be consistent then with the change. Thank you, Mr. Lafferty. Ms. Brophy, since you brought this issue up, is there anything you'd like to add? No, um, Mr. Warren spoke just fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for once. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to fix it. <laughs> If there is no other discussion, um, would let someone like to make a motion? Come on, Todd, you got it. I, I already made the motion. I want to make it BLCCC for whatever that was, 0. 0.39 acres. Second. You? All right, we have a, a motion and a second. Mr. Array? Yes. Ms. Brophy? Yes. Ms. German? Yes. Mr. Hafer? Yes. Mr. Heckman? Yes. Mr. Halipka? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. 
Mr. Perlo? Yes. Ms. Pinero? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. And Ms. Wolfson? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Well, that's the completion of all our issues that were sequestered in um, District 1. Board members, um, we're going into District 2. Can I make a recommendation? We're supposed to end at 730 and it's already 705. Can we? I mean, we have other sessions. Can we make District 2? District 1 went a long time. Can we make District 2 on another date? Uh, you don't think they're all going to go this long? I mean, I, I just, I have a hard stop at 735. I'm going to be at an event and we're, we're not even, we're, we're not going to get through one issue and we're going to be at 735, so. No. I'm, is, I mean, does I, anyone else have a problem carrying on? I don't. I'm good with continuing. How many items do we have at some point? Grace, sir, do you have two? All right. How how long do you plan to go then? Well, I mean, the the time said seven thirty five. Do you plan to go to seven thirty five, or are you going to go past? I think what we'll do, Mr. Warren, is at seven thirty five, we'll we'll take a call and see what everybody wants to do, and if a majority want to get off, then that's what we'll do. But I think right now we're, we'll go to at least till 7.35. Well, I think if we start with D2, we should finish. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mention the issues that were sequestered in um, District 2. And then if we don't have anything we want to add, then we can entertain a motion to accept the staff's recommendations on all the issues that were not sequestered. Good. So um, the ones sequestered are da um, just off two, um, 001, 003, 001, 002, 012, 013, 014, 015, 016, 017, 018, 021, and 022. Are there any issues that I did not mention there that someone would like to sequester? Oh, Madam Chair, just a clarification. Uh, 2-010, I am not sequestering. I'm just, I just need to recuse myself from that. Okay, let me just check. Okay, so we're removing 10 from that. So 10 will now be in the non-sequestered. Um, I also need to recuse, recuse myself from 06. Okay, that's fine, but other people have brought it up. I'm so saying, that stays in a sequestered in the sequestered. Yeah, area. it's it's Chris. Which just with a process question, if if people need to recuse themselves and you put it in with the batch of everything else, then then that doesn't really work. So it's almost like they have right because then they have to recuse themselves from the overall vote on all the issues. Right. That's why it was removed. That's you, like, recuse, you recuse yourself from an issue, you cannot discuss it, and you cannot vote on it. Right. So it has to stay on this list, or else Mark can't vote. I mean, or else Mark can't vote for the package of of staff recommendations. If you take it off this list right. and put it in with the rest of the staff recommendations, he's not going to be able to vote on the whole package. That's correct. That's why we left it on the list. Right. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. Yep. Thanks for for that. It's all learning. Okay, there we go. Okay, do I have a motion to approve all the issues that have not been sequestered? 
Motion. Be it moved that the planning board accepts the recommendations of the planning board staff for the log of issues in district two, with the exception of the sequestered issues listed by chairwoman Hafford. We have a second. Second. Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. Yes. Ms. German. Yes. Mr. Hafer. Yes. Mr. Heckman. Yes. Mr. Halipka. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Perlow. Yes. Ms. Pinero. Yes. Mr. Warren. Yes. Thank you. And, Mi and Ms. Wolfson. Ms. Wolf I'm sorry, they're on the other page, Ms. Wolfson. I'm sorry, I didn't get to that page yet. <laughs> Ms. Wolfson. <laughs> I'm used to it, it's okay. It's on the next page. And I'm sure I know everybody's on like a tight time frame, but do people need a three minute break or something to stretch, get a glass of water? Yeah, I, I, I still think this is not proper to continue to start a whole nother district with, you know. I mean, it's taking that 15 minutes. There's 15 minutes left on the time oh. that we. Todd, it was probably an error to have put an end time because we don't normally put that in time for any count of any board meetings, unfortunately. So sorry that that cramped other commitments that people may have. I, I would, you know, it's taken us over an hour and a half to get through District 1, which had fewer issues than what we have for District 2. So. We're looking at 9 o'clock if we do it at the same pace. Later. So, so we won't be suggest... done with 09 by 9 o'clock. Well, can we just suggest that we keep going till 730 then? And then are, can we table the rest of the district, but get through what we can get through now? 730, what we'll do is we'll see what everybody wants to do. That's what we'll okay. do. We'll take a call and we'll see if more people want to stay on than 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 want to get off. Okay. I have a because, quorum. Like Mr. Lafferty said, when we have a planning board meeting, we don't have a, 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 a total stop time. This would be the first time. Well, it was, it was advertised like that to us. So. Okay, so instead of discussing this further, can we just start with um, um, 2-001 with Mr. Heckman and Ms. Panero? Go ahead, Katie. So I think this sounds like this is a very similar case as to 1-001 uh, that Ms. Brophy um, uh, sequestered. Um, the current uh, <laughs> the current location is actually already for um, apartments in this one residential unit in in this one single well it wouldn't be a single family home one standalone unit and um, the it has community support. From what I understand, there was zero um, anyone against it speaking at the district two uh, work session. And in fact, the community would actually like to see it set, uh, get passed as what was requested. Mr. Heckman, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Well, I just would like to add that the um, community is the Greystone Community Association and a representative of that got up and spoke in favor of this change. And that that community association represents 400 homes. Um, I'm familiar with this property and um, it is a very well established almost historic rental building, apartment building. 
Um, he's got four units in there, is that correct? If he gets the 16s, he would be up to five units. So that would adequately cover him for those units, isn't that correct? That's that's what I figure, yeah. Did I make a motion? I can make a motion. Um, the motion is to support the requested zoning of DR 16. Second. Okay, Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. Yes. Ms. German. Ms. German. Yes. Mr. Hafer. Yes. Mr. Heckman. Yes. Mr. Halipka. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Perlo. Yes. Ms. Pinero. Yes. Mr. Warren. Mr. Warren. Ms. Wolfson. Yes. Motion <laughs> carries. Did we lose Mr. Warren? Okay. At least for the minute. It appears we did, yes. All right, thank you. All right, um, we have 2-003 from Mr. Heckman, Mr. Warren, and Mr. Perlow. Go ahead, Howard, if you like. I'm sorry, this is one or two, I apologize. Three. Two. Three. Three. I'm sorry. Three. Okay. I just need to see where it is on the map. I believe that this is across from the police station right there on the east side of the property. And that I believe that BL would be a reasonable zoning for it. Pretty much everything on both sides of Milford Mill Road as you come up to Slade is, you know, um, businesses of various types, um, dental offices and all kinds of things. Um, I don't think that, um, you know, this would be unreasonable based on everything else that's basically there. Um, as you come up to Reisers Town Road right there. So I believe that the BL would be a reasonable request based on everything else that's in the neighborhood. I was, um, I was going to suggest that the problem is, Howard, that we had a lot of neighborhood associations speak against this um, BL because it allows liquor and fast food restaurants and uh, liquor stores and whatnot. I was thinking if we propose zoning at CB, it upzones it a little bit, but not to the extent that a BL would. So I was gonna move to um, change the zoning to CB. Can somebody just give me what CB? does allow. I apologize, I don't have my manual here at home. Um, it's small commercial businesses serving daily local needs. I would, be, I would be okay with that. It's retail service and restaurants, but not taverns and liquor and all that kind of stuff. And it can also include offices, I guess, if somebody wanted to put a law office there or something like that. Possibly retail service. Is it limited to retail service? I mean, it says retail service and restaurant, except fast food and tavern is basically what it says. And then it just has different setbacks and things like that. Like BL has, BL setback is 10 feet from the front property line. 
40 feet from the street center line. CV is 25 feet or average of adjacent buildings within 100 feet, whichever. So, I mean, the setbacks are more stringent on CB, but it does say retail, comma, service, and restaurants. So, obviously, a law office, I think, is service, Howard. If you agree with that, it should be fine in CB. But I don't know. I mean, planning staff, is that right if it says service? I think that's, I would assume, I, I, don't, I can't speak for the zoning office, but I would assume they think that insurance agent or someone like that is a service. Or a title agent. No, no I'm very happy in Owings Mills. I've <laughs> <laughs> been, been there, done that. Um, <laughs> Um, I guess I'm a little concerned then, you know, the, if, if I, I can, they're concerned with a liquor store or, you know, packaged goods or whatever. Um, that I don't think what the intent is. I think if you look at everything else, that's wrong along there, there is office. Um, but, you know, there is other, um, industrial along Milford mill road as you go down towards the subway and all. Um, so. It has changed over the years. Um, I just, um, I'm a little concerned that that limits it a little bit. Um, you know, that if um, somebody wants to come in and run their business, which is not office, um, that could be a problem. There is this step between CB and BL, which is BLR. What does BLL, BLR allow? It allows. Yeah, the way it reads, Howard, I don't think that addresses your office concern because it says permitted yeah. uses in CB plus fast food, tavern, athletic club. I mean, I really think if you're worried about an office use, I mean, going to BL says retail service, bank, tavern, food, et cetera. I mean, I think the CB that Mark suggested that says service, I think that would cover your office. I don't think you moving up is going to hit what you're asking for based on what I'm reading though. That's what I'm saying. I, I mean, I'm waiting for, I don't know if planning staff knows specifically, but. I mean, it currently is OR. So that which is office, which is office small. Understand I'm trying to give some other uses to it. Pikesville has, you know, had its problems over the last number of years. And I think it really limits what can be there only to office. And I think that's the concern. I think that there are. So you know, under, under CB for uses, it does have offices. It says offices and medical offices accept bail bondsmen as defined by state law. Good, good. All right, I'll accept the CB. Mark, if you want to make an amendment to it. Okay, I'm. Um, yeah, I'm. I moved to um, change the zoning for 2.99 acres to CB. I'll accept that. Mr. Gray. Yes. Rothy. Yes. Ms. German. Yes. Mr. Hafer? Yes. Mr. Heckman? Yes. Mr. Halipka had to step away, and I'd like to say we have a new baby um, Hinton in the group, so he had the best reason to not be here. Aww. Yay. Um, Mr. Johnson? Yes. What do we have? A, a little boy. Okay. Is that correct, Mr. Array? Yes. No name yet. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Perlow? Yes. Ms. Panero? Yes. Ms. Wolfson? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Next step is 004, and this was brought up by Mr. Perlow. Um, 
again, this is, you know, an area, Church Lane, a lot of offices that are there, um, but it sort of limits them to only having office. Um, you know, there is a church across the street, a church that sold their school because it just couldn't operate um, to a Jewish day school. Um, they are already looking to expand. They have not, you know, looked this way. They actually have looked to the church um, to possibly sell them their building. But there are other uses that I believe this part of the area, there's not a lot of housing further down Church Lane. There is, you know, some housing, but this all tends to be office. There is a uh, car detailing shop pretty much right here on the corner of the road that by that runs along Ricerstown Road. I can't think of the name of it right now. Um, so I'd like to see the the BL. I might consider the CB, but um, you know, I do think that I don't want to see it limited um, you know, to where it is at this point. Jennifer, can we expand the map to see more of the area? Thank you. There is some BO there, so yeah. I Howard, I think staff recommended BO. Yeah. Okay, I apologize. Then I probably was doing it just to be able to discuss it if it came up with other people sequestering it. Yep. So, and I so, just broke in with staff recommendation then. All right, we have staff recommendation. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, Mr. Ray. Yes. Ms. Brophy? Yes. Ms. German? Yes. Mr. Hafer? Yes. Mr. Heckman? Yep. Mr. Holipka still stepped off? Yep. Ms. Yes. Are you back, Mr. Hol okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Perlo, Ms. Yes. Ms. Panero, yes. Mr. Warren's off. Ms. Wolfson, yes. That passes. Thank you. Next, we're going to two dash zero zero five. Mr. Heckman, Mr. Heinel's not here. Mr. Warren's not here. Ms. Panero. So, Mr. Heckman and Mrs. Panero. Go ahead, Katie. I, I was going to say, yeah, if you could expand on this as well, uh, have the map go out to give a, a, a true view of the of the area. I live probably less than two miles from this property. Um, I'm on that road probably 15, I'm not exaggerating, probably five times a day. Um, my kid's school is not very far away. Um, this, it, it, it was, it, I believe it was a home that has been hopeful. Uh, it's been completely updated. It looks beautiful on the exterior. It um, is next to an OR1. It's next to an office. Um, if you go down farther, there is a shopping center. There is a tropical. There is a Pepe's, which is a pizza shop. Uh, and then it continues going um, down along Falls Road. So this is a, a, a main corridor. Um, the owners have done a very nice job with the exterior, as I've mentioned. Um, they did speak at the work session and they had mentioned that they weren't going to do like the typical antique shop um, stuff with, with, you know, sometimes some, sometimes not all antique shops can have some junky stuff sitting outside. Um, they do have the ability, uh, the spaces for five to six parking spots. Um, and I do think it is a, a nice addition to the community. Okay. Ms. Any other questions? Yeah, I, I would agree with that. All of that. Um, I also live nearby and um, the, the property is subject to the national registry. It's on the historic register. So it has, they will not be allowed to make drastic changes to the building. So I think it's a good use for it. Okay. Then um, is there any other questions or comments? 
If not hearing any, Katie, do you want to make a motion? I uh, guess my motion is to um, support the request of zoning of BL for the 0.22 acres. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Mr. Array? Yes. Ms. Brophy? Yes. Ms. German? Yes. Mr. Hafer? Yes. yes. Mr. Heckman? Yes. Mr. Halipka? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Perlo? Yes. Ms. Pinero? Yes. And Ms. Wolfson? Yes. Thank you. We're plugging right along. 2-006, Ms. Brophy, Mr. Heckman, Mr. Perlo, Ms. Pinero, uh, and Mr. Halipka. Jen, if you'll pull that out a little bit to give a little more context, proximity to Valley Inn to the south. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I, I, I guess I'll start. I mean, there were a few of us that sequestered. So basically, um, as Director Lafferty already mentioned, it it is already adjacent to the Valley Inn, which um, is a successful restaurant. And the current petitioner, I think, asking just to use a portion of this for um, like an ancillary complementary use um, next to it, um, as long as they, you know, use that existing parking lot, um, the access wouldn't be changed along Falls Road, et cetera. I would, um, I would recommend that we actually approve the petitioner's request to rezone it um, to BL. So just to note, um, I believe we were told by EPS that they had already met with the petitioner and had told them that the property wasn't developable because it was wetlands. The entire, the entire portion that they're asking for. I believe that's what the comments were. No, I, uh, I got a clarification on that and actually okay. the only piece of that entire property that is not in the wetlands is the 0.81 that they're requesting. Um, so that that's, that's about large enough to put a 2,500 square foot building and, um, and maybe a little more. The problem is it would not be able to stand alone and support its own parking. Right. So um, there's going to need to be some sort of covenant or easement, which I understand the owner already knows about and is already, you know, going to do, had planned on doing that. So um, also just to note that um, I think in a subsequent letter, there was, um, I think the attorney, um, what's his name, um, Chris Mudd, uh, suggested that they'd be willing to do BLR instead of BL. Yeah, that was in the justification letter, but, but Amy, so I'm looking at the EPS comment that was on the website and it says some environmental concerns, but generally consistent with department goals, priorities, and programs. We're just talking about the front portion that borders along the parking lot and fall, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. The environmental, I'm not certainly no environmental scientist, but the environmental aspect or towards um, 83 and um, it might be uh, rolling run or effectively a little area. I would think there isn't too much environmental impact where they are planning to put the property. Yeah, I just didn't know if it was actually in the wetlands that Amy was mentioning, but it, that's not in the comment on it that's on the website it says like two one so i didn't know amy was there like an updated comment that we don't see on the website i think amy had to step out she had to oh sorry yeah i think our meeting with EPS, it was after that time emily and uh, there was expressed concern about the wetlands portion uh, not whatever mark 
her different, obviously. But I also note from the comments that Public Works says it's deficient sewer, deficient traffic shed, and not a planned service area for water. So all that does not stop a zoning change. It just talks to the developer, the, the ability to develop the site. And as Mark was saying, that I need to address because of the limited uh, development envelope, uh, obviously going to have to work out something with Valley Inn or some other parking. Mr. Lafferty, if yes. the zoning were to, if they were to get their approved, um, the requested zoning that they want, would the wetlands issue be addressed later down the road? That shouldn't, should yeah. we be concerned with that? We, well, we get concerned about it because the question is, do you rezone when you can't really make any, you can't develop, but the underlying zoning still would be subjected to whatever the development process is. So you're right, uh, Katie, I mean, it is, they have to go through development review, they have to do all the environmentals, they have to make sure they have adequate parking, egress, ingress, all those things okay. all taken care of during the development process. Okay. And, and MDE, MDE, they are very strict, really, very strict. I know. Yeah. And you can see the screen going behind the property, you know, back part of the property, but, mm. but no, and that it's, itself is not a, it, that does not determine whether a property can be de, uh, rezoned. Correct. I will say that the, uh, I believe Ms. Uh, Chris Mudd said that this, if, in my notes at least, that um, the property, the, the, uh, the coffee shop would offer uh, would operate under off hours of the Valley Inn, which is that very, very, very large parking lot, um, which I can say that parking lot does get very crowded at night. Um, but because my house, I literally think is completely like up, across from 695 right there. Um, so it does get that parking lot is very large and it does get very crowded, but certainly not during coffee shop hours. So I can't um, foresee parking being um, a concern. Okay, and is there any other questions or comments? Mr. Halipka, your name was on here. Is there anything you'd like to add? Nope. Okay. Um, so are, are both this parcel and the valley in owned by the same owner. Yes. 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 The will, will be owned, owned and operated by the Apple Street. So, Ms. Panera, are you ready to make a motion? Um, yes. I would like to uh, support requested zoning for BL of 0.81 acres. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. All right, Mr. Array? Yes. Ms. Brophy? Yes. Ms. German? Yes. Mr. Hafer? Yes. Mr. Heckman? Yes. Mr. Halipka? Yes. Mr. Johnson. No. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Perlow. I recluse myself from the vote. Ms. Pinero. Yes. Ms. Wolfson. No. Motion carries. Okay, now we're moving on to 2-007. Ms. Brophy, Ms. Perlo, Ms. Pinero, and Ms. Halipka. So, um, so I guess I'll start, but I do apologize, um, Chairwoman Habert. I have to leave in about 10 minutes. Um, so the first thoughts I was having was, um, I mean, I was looking at the notes um, with planning. It says it is consistent with um, I'm sorry, there's one document that says it's consistent with master plan, it looked like, and then there was another one that was inconsistent, so I couldn't tell if I was looking at the right piece, but I do like the idea of having 
um, upscale senior housing, which is something that that area really needs. And that looks like that's what the petitioner is looking to get with this zoning on this portion of land. Um, so personally, I mean, I would recommend that we actually uh, approve the zoning request from the petitioner. Any other questions or comments? I would suggest that um, I'm not sure if it's senior housing as more, you know, 55 and older apartments for them. The piece across the street is senior housing that you'll see in a minute. The suburban club has had some issues as many country clubs have um, over the last 10 or 15 years. Um, and I believe that this would be um, financially stabilizing the country club for the community. Um, I believe that the neighborhood is in favor of it. I don't believe there was any major, um, you know, discussions or complaints. They did have some community meetings in the neighborhood. Um, I think that it, uh, Slade Avenue across the street is all high rise, um, apartments, mostly condos, co-op as well. There were about. 50 townhouses built um, along Slate Avenue going towards Ricerstown Road, which would be to the northwest. So um, I do believe it's there. It's not on the side of the street where there is the um, single family homes in Dumbarton. Um, and I think that there is a need in Pikesville um, for people that spend their winters in Florida or wherever. Um, and needing a place to maybe have a second home here um, in the Pikesville area. So if I can, Madam Chair, uh, we did receive a couple opposition letters, one being from the Pikesville Township Association. We have some from some individual families in the area. But if I'm not mistaken, I did take a phone call in the past week or so. Um, the Dunbarton Association across the street had a change in leadership and I believe they were for it prior to, but now they are against it, you know, as currently. They're against the upzoning of it? Correct. Okay, thank you. Well, for, for what sorry. it's worth, I, I, I agree with Howard. I think senior housing or would be a good fit for this site. And it does kind of fit with our 2030 master plan goals. I, what I think though is kind of bizarre is the the zoning boundary where it, you know, has that little panhandle stretching to Reisterstown Road. And then it includes the current clubhouse, um, which- No, I don't believe it does, Mark. So yeah, the- the uh, BLCCC would cover the current clubhouse. Okay. The way the REA code is written, it needs to be within a thousand feet of a CCC district. So they need that CCC in order to get the REA one. Well, I think your alternative is that the club possibly could, you know, not make it. Um, and then you're going to have a 120 acres of land that needs to be uh, looked at and rezoned. Um, I think that if, you know, the neighborhood came in and said townhouses there, uh, you'd have a lot more than what you're telling me. I don't, I'm not aware of this letter and the change of leadership. If you want to read it to us, I would let you read it to me. But, um, you know, I was under the impression that the neighborhood was supportive of this. Um, if you're telling me there's only a few letters when there's been other issues in Pikesville and along Park Heights and along Suffolk Lane and other things, there's been sort of an uproar over the last 18 years or so I've been on this board. So I don't think a few comments, you know, is necessarily negative. Howard, can I ask a question about the 55 and old? Yep. Is, is that, so is that a marketing tool or will those units actually be deeded um, so that they are required to be 55 and older? Um, they're not being sold as condominiums or apartments, so you don't necessarily need to, I believe, designate anything for it. I think they're going to be targeted. There's a project um, down the street that was recently finished. Um, 
as an as an addition in the city, though not in the county. Um, so costs tend to be higher in the city, right across the line on Slade Avenue. Um, that you know, I think are filling up and renting because there is a need. There is a, a major influx of religious Jewish people from out of the Baltimore area into this area, and I think there is a great need. But it's not going to be targeted at all for families or for young families at that point. This is, I believe, going to be targeted more for, um, you know, people that are in their 50s, 60s, maybe even into the 70s. Yeah, point. I believe it will be deed restricted. And I think the reason for that is um, they don't want families moving in with children contributing to um, possibly overcrowding schools. I don't know what the situation is. But that's the reason why they typically do that. I believe that Suburban, and I'm not a member of it, but Suburban is hopeful that many of the people that would move into this building would support Suburban and be members of it. There's some discussion about having, you know, I don't want to call it discounted membership, but memberships available to the apartment people so that they can use the dining facilities as well as, you know, the club if they want to pay the dues to be able to play tennis, paddle ball, or, you know, golf if that's their desire. So, Mark, how would, how would we confirm that that it was that they were deeded? I think that's the intent. I don't. I, um, I don't I think don't, there's any covenants put on it yeah. at this point yet. Yeah. But you know, the councilman, if that's what he wants to do, can talk to them about that. If um, that's the case, I mean, I'm, you know, 55 and older. I see it all the time. All of a sudden, you've got somebody that's 47, and it, you know, possibly has a parent that would like to live in that development that can't because, you know, they happen to have a spouse that might be 47. Um, you know, so sometimes that's a, a problem. But I think that the intent, if you look at all of the apartments, condos across the street, it's mostly elderly, you know, people like me. And me. And me. So um, to, to your point, Bev, I guess what I would uh, just suggest that if the board feels that this should be developable, then whether it's covenanted, senior, a PUD, or something else, that's up to the councilman to negotiate at that stage in time. But I think we could approve it as, as RAE. But, but that's what I mean. That, but if, and that suggests that the board the playing board feels it should be intensely developed, I guess is what I'm saying, Howard. Is it, you know, it's not like you're saying we'll go to DR P five or five five. You're suggesting RAE and that is a statement to the county uh, council member so that you believe intense development is appropriate here. Could we go to the RAE RAE two and suggest the covenants, you know, with our approval or not? We're really not, the board's not in a position to attach that kind of condition as far as a covenant. Um, maybe I don't, this is my first rodeo on this, so I don't know if it's something that's in a transmittal to the uh, council members or not. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you could go to whatever zoning you think is appropriate. It doesn't have to be what they requested. I would tell you, Stephen, it is your first rodeo. I've had about four or five. We have always in the past suggested and approved things with a covenant, um, you know, which if that's what the councilman wants. Okay. Well, um, if that's if that's if that's the board's pleasure, we will transmit that to the council. Okay. But the the other option is that we could recommend that this be a PUD, and then if if they go through the PUD process. It becomes part of the deal of the approval of the PUD, the covenant would. Mark, you might know, but I thought Izzy, because there was talk about a merger eight, five, six, seven, eight years ago, and the PUD didn't work then. So this is just taking the piece that they want to develop, not putting a PUD on the, you know, sort of the whole property at that point. That was my remembrance from the from the neighborhood discussions. I mean, I Maybe. think that you are. So is there a are, motion, you, Madam Chair? I'll, yeah, I'll make a motion. Thank you. I'll make a motion if you might, don't mind. Please. 
Okay. Um, I would move that the requested zoning of BLCCC, um, the 6.53 acres and the RAE2 with a covenant for 12.66 be approved for this parcel um, going forward. Uh, Madam Chair, real quick, REA2 requires this to be in a CT district, a town center district, and this is not, it's across the street. So that has to be adjusted. <laughs> okay, well, then we'll take the RAE1 then if that's the concern with the covenant. So can you specify the covenant, Howard? You're talking about the covenant to make it senior. Well, the covenant, if the if the councilman feels that it should be 55 and older, then we would consider that um, to get the zoning um, at that point. So can you really put that that uh, restriction? Well, again, I don't know that the councilman wants that, but if that's the case, um, either they accept it or they don't get the, you know, our suggestion of the approval for it. Um, I think it's very important for Pikesville's economic development and redevelopment that there be this um, senior kind of housing um, available to our community. There is none really. Anything that's been built in Pikesville was built 40 years ago. Okay. Mr. Perlow, you have a motion that's been modified by um, Mr. Worley. Do we have a second to Mr. Perlow's motion? Second. Okay. Mr. Array. What is the motion? Motion is to approve the requested zoning of BLCCC 6.53 RAE1 of 12.66 with a covenant giving the county councilman the ability to negotiate that covenant as to age restriction if he desires it. May I, may I ask a question? Sure. Um, just so we're clear, currently the DR2 would permit 38 houses, is that correct? And this would increase the density to over 500 for the RE1. And, and is it 240 units for the BLCCC? Yes, 240, yes. So we're going to go from 38 to 740 units, correct? Yep. The, the community uh, discussion meeting that was held talked about around 240 units apartment units well i understand that but we ha we really have to talk about what's permitted because that's what the change will mean well but the change can't be built that many units can't be built on four acres four point uh eight four eight i'm sorry well i'm, I'm looking at the wrong line 19 19 acres well i don't have a problem for us to put a condition because we have no such authority to condition the approval. 55 and order, I don't think it is not for us to make that determination. And I also know that looking at my notes, there was, you know, great support, you know, at the meetings, at the hearings, there was great community support also. But I do not think that uh, we should condition our approval for 55 and all because we don't have any such standing to do so. Well, there are many apartment projects up on Hooks Lane and up towards um, Ricerstown Road where Lenny's is that mm -hmm. provide for the families in the community. Um, there are condominiums up on Hooks Lane as well, both. Um, Green Tree and Adam Woods. Adam Woods does have some very old high rise condominiums, but this is something that would be new and fresh um, for the community and having the ability to hopefully tie in with the club for membership, I think provides a, a very nice apartment amenity um, for these people that would move into this building. Um, in the past, 
we have done covenants, but the bottom line is we all know the council has the right to do whatever they want. So we have a motion and we have a second. Is there anything we need to discuss before we go for a vote? Okay, then let, let's go for a vote. And then what we should do is we should talk about moving forward for the rest of the evening. Mr. Array. Yes. Ms. Brophy. Yes. Ms. German. Yes. Mr. Hafer. Yes. Mr. Heckman. Um, I, I really like this project, but I think the PUD's the way to go, so I'm going to say no. Mr. Halipka. Yes. Mr. Johnson. No. Mr. McGinnis. No. no. Mr. Perlo. Yes. Ms. Pinero. Sorry, yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Warren is yes also. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. Mr. Warren. And Ms. Wolfson. Yes. Okay, motion carried. So we're at uh, four minutes till eight o'clock. We've done a very good job. We've gone through uh, about one fourth or a little more than almost a half of the items, three more, well, two more, and would have half of the items. So do you want to um, table this? But then we'll add another meeting if we do that. Does everybody understand that if we keep pushing this back, we add another meeting? Well, can we do it on Thursday? Because we're only supposed to cover one district. And I don't think as, as of today, there are no sequestered issues for Thursday's meeting. So that almost seems logical. Well, the deadline for sequestering is until, four until tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow. I would suggest if you're going to do this to move it to Thursday, we've already posted all the work sessions online and we did not have another date this indicated okay well, then we that, that does bring up an issue folks i mean they post online that we're all going to be meeting and and going through these issues so um it's you know we've told the public they've let the public know so why don't we see how many people can stay on i'm going to call your name and if just say you can stay or you can't. Mr. Array. I will stay. Ms. Brophy. Sorry, I cannot. Ms. German. I can stay. Mr. Hafer. I cannot. Mr. Heckman. I can. You can or cannot? I can. Mr. Halipka. I can't. Cannot. Cannot. Mr. Johnson. I can. I'm in a conference. Mr. McGinnis. Can. Mr. Perlo. I can probably give another half hour, 40 minutes. Ms. Pinero. No. Mr. Warren. No. Ms. Wolfson. I can I can stay. So we have one, two, three, four, five people that can stay, and we have one, two, two, three, four, five, six people that have to go. So, Mr. Lafferty, I'm going to need your assistance on this. How would how do you think we should handle it? Well, Madam Chair, as a work session, you don't need to have a quorum of the board. But when you only have five or six people, and there's so many others who I'm sure would want to weigh in, I'm not sure that continuing um, really is is successful. I don't know. I just sent a message to Ms. Mante whether or not. Can everybody turn off your your um, talking right now so we can hear Mr. Lafferty, please. Thank you, Mr. Lafferty. Continue. Um, so I don't. I don't know that there's sufficient um, 
number of people to continue tonight. Uh, District 5 is Thursday, and there were 189 issues filed for District 5. And while we don't have uh, any sequestered items yet, um, the board, I, I don't know what kind of issues they may come up with in the next 24 hours. Um, and whether we can then put District 2, the balance onto the meeting on the 18th, which also is a regular board meeting, um, because District 3 is likely to also generate a lot of questions on the 16th. Well, board so, members, I mean, can you, if, if you don't, when we have planning board member meetings like this, especially ones that can go on for a long time, is everybody free on Thursday night where they don't have a drop off time by seven, eight o'clock? We might have to go a little longer. So can we start earlier than we did today? Is it possible? Uh, Nancy, um, yes. me again, Amy. So historically we have always, you know, again, we post these online, we post the start time online. We, we post which districts are being heard, which nights. Um, I think if we need to add second district to the fifth district on Thursday, we can, but we really need to try to follow the schedule that we've set. We have historically always done it this way. Planning board members have known that they had to stay for the balance of the time. Um, that's just the way it is to get through all of these issues. Yeah. I, I, I hear so you. you. Add it Wednesday, I mean, for Thursday night. Would it, would it make sense to start earlier on Thursday night? Like Mr. Array just mentioned. We've posted that they start at 530. Um, staff, you know, has made arrangements and schedules for it starting at 530. Um, I, you know, I, I don't. There's no real precedent for it, so I, I don't really know. I would think we need to start at 530. I, I just start think at 530 since that's publicly posted. Mm -hmm. But no, to answer your and and sorry, director, to answer your no, question also, um, Chairwoman Hafford. Yeah, I apologize. This is my first CZMP. I didn't realize that the time slot on the calendar was not hard and fast, but I'm I'm prepared to stay longer for the other ones now that I know. So I, I do apologize for that. I, go ahead, Nancy. I'm sorry. I'm asking all the board members to do whatever they possibly can to clear their schedule for next week. So we get these meetings back on schedule. We don't inconvenience the public or the planning staff. Um, so I'd appreciate that. Thank you. And the next work session is this Thursday. Is it also going to be virtual? Yes, yes. all of the work sessions are virtual. Okay. Was there some reason that we made them all virtual? I personally always felt that being in the hearing room with all of our members together <laughs> gave us the ability to talk to each other. I find it difficult sometimes to, to do that um, on a virtual discussion group. I do agree that but that's really support that so i don't know what i like i think to... staff um tried to take into account the fact that um these historically run long and there are there could there could be as many as seven of them we try to condense them uh down but from a perspective of um fatigue and staff time um we felt that holding them virtually would make it a little bit easier for everyone involved no but it was not discussed with us from changes that have been on the board for a long time. I sort of feel like the whole process has been consolidated in a much shorter time that we actually took our votes, I thought, in June, not in May, and had more time to schedule them as separate meetings with each district. And you know, I think that, you know, I was away not knowing that it was going to be February dates um, for some of the hearings. I would have liked to have been there. And I just felt like it had always been in March, and that's when I knew it would, I thought it was going to be. And we ended up having a lot of them in February. Okay, um, all right. But for, for now, um, people have to get off. They, some of our board, uh, board members have mentioned they've got to leave now. 
we are, we've got in front of us what we have in front of us. Our next meeting is this Thursday. It's going to be virtual. And what we'll do is, if, um, Amy, if this is correct, we'll start with District 2 and then we'll go into District 5. And we just all have to be ready for a little longer evening. That's correct. Okay, if there's nothing else. Let's see here. I'm going to read the last page. Okay. Now, Madam Chair, may I ask you, just to ask sure. the members generally, uh, the number of items that have been sequestered in these two districts uh, was well over half, about half of the total number of issues that were filed. And so the question is, what could or should we have done differently to address the questions or concerns board members have so we can cut down on the sequestered items. And not trying to cut off any debate discussion, uh, but when well over half of the issues have been sequestered, there's to me it's a suggestion that either we may not have provided sufficient information or there are questions that we need to try to vet ahead of time. Uh, yeah. And as to Howard's point, um, the county council changed the code last year to move it to February. So we would have the opportunity for public input before recommendations were made. If we need to consider four years from now, pushing the work session back further into April so we can still get the recommendations of the council in June as required that could be something to be taken up after this series of work sessions and votes. But if there's something we should have done differently or better, don't have to answer it now, I'd welcome to hear that so that we can help you all get through these issues more easily. Steve, yeah. I would say 15 years ago, there were four or 500 issues rather than the 300 we had. And we had, I would think, just as many percentage wise of sequestered, but doing it one each night, you know, seemed to work better. And we got through that district, you know, whatever the time was. I don't remember if we started at four or five thirty, but you know, I would tell you that I was I skipped the Levendale board meeting tonight because I wanted to be here. Um, you know, I had a three o'clock call and I rushed home to take this call. So that I could be at least comfortable, you know, on this call, um, you know, so I might not be as comfortable in the office, but I do think things moved a little bit better in the offices in past years in the, uh, in the conference room. Whatever. Steve, I thank you for asking that question. I'll, I'll be honest. Um, the reason I sequestered so many in my, in my district is because the planning staff recommendations um, were kind of silent. I mean, there was no reason given for why um, you, on most of these issues, staff recommended no change. And um, I kind of wanted to hear why. So that's why I sequestered so many. Um, and, and I agree, I totally agree with that, Mark. I agree Mark. with that, Mark. There were, I had the, and I, maybe it's not practical. I mean, Lord knows the staff works so hard, but I, I had the same question. If there was no change recommended, why? I just think it was important for us to know that. Well, in our district, we've already had uh, a chance for the people to question and talk with the councilman. So uh, I don't know how many other districts did that, but everybody's had a chance to, to do it at least once in our district. I think they've done it in most districts, Mr. McGinnis. Anyway, so yeah, we need to think about. It. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Beth. So, so Thanks. Mark, so what you are saying is that you want additional explanation when they say no change. You want to know why there's no change, and that would actually yeah. could. Okay. I mean, yeah, there's you get little glimpses in the staff report, like it's incompatible with. A master plan 2030 or something like that. Um, but um, it takes a long time to go through 
all of that information if it was just like right there available to us. I, I, I appreciate that, Mark, and I really applaud all the thoughtful work that the planning board members have put in because I know each of you really invest a lot of time in going through these issues. And like you say, you want to understand the reasoning and that's totally appropriate. Appreciate that. Sorry, Nancy, didn't mean to hide. No, no, you're all, this is very, very important. Any other questions or comments? Ms. Wolfson, nobody can hear you. <laughs> I just have to applaud the website that is posted with all the CZMP map and how accessible all that information is. And those explanations are in great, you know, detail, they're objective, you know, and, you know, if you take the time to really go through it, which, you know, you know, I think we have an obligation to do before we sequester things, it answers a lot of our questions. So I really want to thank the staff for all they've done to make this a very easy to access. Thank you for that comment, Ms. Wolfson. All right, any other questions, comments? So, Not hearing any, go ahead. So Madam Chair, I Going back to what what uh, I think it was um, Howard, maybe Howard said this, that what can we do? Like, like you know, we did district by district, uh, one a day. Is that possible? Like district five, they have so many issues. So can we do like one district day, just like we did, you know, during the hearings? Right now, Is Mr. Ray, at, at next week, we just have District 5, don't we, Amy? Thursday. You just added number two, the balance of two. Right. That's what I'm saying, right, that. But we only had five. We had one next week. No, we, have the, two. we have, we have two five and we six have, next week. We have three and four and then. Oh, three and four. Five, I'm sorry. And three and four. And seven. Yes. And this Thursday, we have, you know, the remainder of two. Plus five, right? Right. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. I'm only currently sequestering two for district five. So. Well, we're in three and four next week. No, I'm talking about Thursday. Right. Okay. I don't know if we can do anything at, at this late a notice, Mr. Array to make changes. I really don't. I think next week we just have to add two on and then Amy are all the meetings posted for the rest of this. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Step, step away, but yes, okay. all of them have already been posted. Okay. okay. So we we might just have we just have to take it as it is. It's going to be longer evenings. I don't I don't know it, it, since it's already been out there to the public. So going back to what Kathy just said about the website. So Mark, since you have so many of these issues and questions, would you be appropriate for you to visit the website and try to Mark is gone. Oh, he's gone. Yep. Okay. But I think we can wrap it for the night, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right. Well, this Thank is you. it. We'll see you next week. No. Remember Thursday. No. No, Thursday. <laughs> Thursday. I'm sorry. <laughs> She's tired. <laughs> Understand. See you all. She's muted. <laughs> See you in two days. Yeah. Thanks, everybody.